Ulysses S. Grant came from the state of Ohio and at the age of 17 he attended West Point Military Academy in New York. On finishing his studies he was ranked as an average student taking 21st place out of a class of 43. Although he was an excellent horseman, one of the best the academy had ever produced, nevertheless he was assigned to the infantry and became a second lieutenant. By his mid-twenties he was involved in the Mexican-American War in the 1840s. He fought in the battles of Palo Alto and Monterey and emerged from that campaign as a respected army officer. Following the Mexican War, Grant married Julia Grant in 1848. They had a family of four children. At this time, he found army life somewhat boring and became a heavy drinker. By 1854, at the age of 32, Grant, Grant was found drunk in his headquarters and dismissed from the army. Following his army career, he built a log cabin in Missouri, which he called Hard Scrabble. He tried farming and working as a bill collector, but failed basically at both. By the late 1850s, he was forced to accept a job to return to his father's leather store in Galena in Illinois. Life had reached a low point at this stage and Grant seemed something of a failure in life. However, when the Civil War broke out in April 1861, he was appointed military aide to Governor Richard Yates. In June, he was promoted to the rank of colonel and put in charge of the 21st Regiment. By August, he had become Brigadier General. The following month, Union forces under Grant fought the Confederates in both Illinois and Kentucky. On Lincoln's instructions, he informed Kentuckians that the Union Army had entered their state as their friend, not as their enemy. For the President, it was crucial at this stage that this border state of Kentucky would remain within the Union. Throughout 1862, Grant was involved in the Western theater of the war, mainly in Tennessee. In February 1862, the battles of Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson took place along the Cumberland River. With the help of gunboats from the river, Grant forced General Simon Bunker into an unconditional sur surrender. This was the first major victory for the Union side in the war, and Lincoln promoted Grant to the title of Major General of all the volunteer forces as a result of the victory. Grant became something of a national hero at this stage, and the Northern press began to call him Unconditional Surrender Grant. However, a short time later, in April 62, Robert Lee ordered a surprise attack on Grant's armies at, Sh at Shiloh in Hardin County, Tennessee. At Shiloh, Grant was forced to retreat until he got Union re reinforcements. Shiloh created over 23,700 casualties and convinced Grant that the Civil War would be a long-drawn-out affair. In October 1862, Union forces achieved an important victory also at Corinth in northeastern Mississippi. The following year, 1863, became the most decisive year of the Civil War with victories for the Union in both Vicksburg and in Gettysburg in the first week of July. The siege of Vicksburg went on for 46 days between the 18th of May and the 4th of July. This siege produced enormous casualties, 32,000 on the Confederate side alone. Vicksburg was finally forced to surrender through, the lack, through lack of supplies and starvation. It was a crucial victory for the Union as it split the Confederacy in two. The Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania took place at the same time, basically the first three days of July. Robert Lee invaded the North actually in, an, in a deliberate attempt to ease the pressure on, on Vicksburg. Gettysburg was the most intense battle of the Civil War, with 51,000 casualties in the space of just three days, the first three days of July. It actually failed to relieve Pittsburgh, which fell on the 4th of July, 1863. So therefore, Gettysburg and Pittsburgh are therefore seen as a key turning point in the war by most historians. Lincoln made his famous address a few months later on the 19th of November, 63. Although the war went on for another 17 months, this speech assumed a Union victory with Lincoln speaking, among other things, of binding up the nation's wounds. A week after Lincoln's address at, at Gettysburg, the Union side achieved another victory at Chatt Chattanooga in eastern, eastern Tennessee. Thereafter, Grant was promoted to Major General of all the Union forces. In 1864, Grant took command of the Eastern Theatre of the War. The Battles of the Wilderness began in Virginia with three days of intense fighting between the 5th and 8th of May 1864. The Union side suffered over 17,000 ca casualties, which began what was became known as the Overland Campaign. Throughout the summer and autumn of 1864, 
Grant continued to pressurize the Confederacy forces on, on multiple fronts. The Union army attempted to split Lee's army from the capital, Richmond. Grant dug 30 mile long trenches between Petersburg and, Rich, and Richmond, these two crucially important cities, in order to cut off supplies and communications between them. Meanwhile, General Sherman marched his army through the South, devastating states such as Georgia and, and South Carolina in the process, in an attempt to get a, a comprehensive victory at this point. In December 1864, the Union Army achieved an important victory at Nashville in Tennessee, thereby taking over the entire state of Tennessee. By March 1865, Lee was trapped as supplies ran out and thousands of his own soldiers began to desert him. He was finally forced to surrender at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia on the 9th of April 1865. The Civil War basically resulted in three important amendments to the Constitution, basically the 13th, 14th and 15th granting both freedom, equality and voting rights to people of colour. Ulysses Grant became Secretary of War for a brief period following the Civil War, before going on to win the Republican nomination and presidential election of November 1868. In his inaugural address, he emphasized the need to process the 15th Amendment as quickly as possible in order to give voting rights to people of colour. He appointed Hamilton Fish as Secretary of State and George S. Boutwell as Secretary of the Tre Treasury. General Sherman succeeded him as Commander of the Army. In March 1869, he signed a bill allowing black people to serve on juries and to hold office in Washington, D.C., and the following year, 1870, foreign blacks were allowed to become U.S. citizens for the first time. States such as Virginia, Mississippi and Texas were allowed to rejoin the Union following their acceptance of the 15th Amendment. People of color were elected to Congress for the first time and all states were allowed to rejoin the Union in the early years of Grant's presidency. In 1870, a new department, the Department of Justice, was established. Its primary purpose was to defeat the Ku Klux Klan, which had emerged in the South as a powerful anti-civil rights movement. A new Attorney General, M.S. T. Ackerman, was determined to crush the Klan, especially in South Carolina. New laws were introduced for the arrest of Klan members, and 470 of their members were arrested. Many of their wealthy leaders fled the state. During his first term, Grant was effectively a very good civil rights leader. However, during the second term, the policy of reconstruction began to weaken as the economy went into recession and northern states basically began to lose uh, interest in reform in the South. In the South, Democratic Redeemer-type politicians also gained office and introduced Jim Crow-type laws which further restricted the civil rights of people of colour. Grant signed the Civil Rights Act of 1875, but there was never really much enforcement of this, especially in the South. In relation to the economy, Grant wanted to replace greenback dollars, which had expanded rapidly during the Civil War with a gold-backed currency. This policy, which was to be achieved on a gradual basis by the release of gold on a fortnightly basis over a number of years. However, two corrupt businessmen, Jay Gould and James Fisk, convinced the President to block the sale of gold in support of Western farmers. Meanwhile, the boss secretly bought large quantities of gold on the New York Stock Exchange in order to take advantage of a price increase. However, by early September, the president realized their plan and ordered the sale of $4 million of, $4 million of gold on the 24th of September, 1869. This event became known as Black Friday and collapsed the price of gold on the stock exchange, created chaos generally in the stock exchange and led to recession in the wider economy. The presidency was further damaged by the scandals such as the Whiskey Ring in the early 1870s. In June 1874, Grant appointed a new Treasury Secretary, Benjamin Bristow, who investigated the Whiskey Ring scandal. Twelve months later, 300 members of the Whiskey Ring were arrested in May 1875. Grant appointed John Henderson as Special Prosecutor. Henderson's investigations led to the involvement of some of Grant's closest advisers, which included the President's Secretary General Orville Bancock, who had received expensive gifts from the Whiskey Ring. At the trial, Henderson accused Bancock and others of obstruction of, of justice and highlighted their close contacts with the Ring. However, the President stood by as Secretary, which helped him avoid conviction and prison. The Whiskey Ring scandal involved the bribery of hundreds of revenue officials and politicians. Whiskey distributors basically paid 
huge bribes in order to avoid paying their own whiskey tax. Eventually, 110 members of the ring were convicted and over dollars in lost revenue was recovered to the government. In the end, the president fired the special prosecutor, John Henderson. These financial scandals, both Black Friday and the whiskey ring, damaged Grant's reputation. But the president remained committed to the policy of overall financial stability and replacing greenback dollars with a gold-backed currency over a 10-year period. And he signed the Public Credit Act in 1869 to that effect. Grant was also a moral conservative in the Christian tradition. In 1871, the Moral Act rounded up and prosecuted hundreds of Utah Mormon polygamists, including their leader, Brightham Young. In 1873, the Comstock Act prosecuted those involved in both pornography and abortion. Grant appointed Anthony Comstock as the primary prosecutor in this campaign. Grant as president also reformed the civil service with the establishment of the Civil Service Commission, which set exams for various grades within the service. Gold was discovered in the Black Hills of Dakota and Montana in the mid-1870s, and this led to intense pressure on Grant to break up previous agreement with the Indian tribes and allow white gold seekers to access to the reserve territories. However, the more aggressive tribes fought battles against the Federal Army in regard to this. The best known battle would be the Battle of Bighorn, or Cluster's Last Stand. This battle was fought in Montana. Cluster lost his own life and 210 of his men, and the Severed Cavalry fought a brave campaign against thousands of Indians. Eventually, agreement was reached with the Indian tribes, whereby gold seekers were allowed into the reserve territory. One of Grant's great foreign policy objectives was to take over the Dominican Republic. However, he failed in this objective mainly due to the opposition of Charles Sumner, leader of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, who defeated the treaty in the Senate. Grant successfully concluded the negotiation of the Treaty of Washington with Britain in 1871. This treaty settled claims in regard to the uh, CSS Alabama ship. Britain paid $15.5 million to America in the treaty, and the, the treaty also dealt with fishing rights in Canadian waters and created good relations between the two nations in the following decades. Ulysses Grant is considered one of America's greatest generals. However, he is regarded as something of an average president. The state of Colorado joined the Union in August 7, 1876, bringing the total number of states to 38. The population of the United States was 48 million at this time at the end of his presidency in 1877. Following his present presidency, he went on a world tour where he met where he met Queen Victoria and Bismarck of Germany. He wrote his memoirs while he was dying of throat cancer in the last year's year of his life. He died in July 85 and is buried in New York City. Where do you get this thing off?